Okay, first let's do one hour of our lecture. Uh, what we had studied up to now was we, okay, we looked at two different media, dielectrics, and we looked at how the electromagnetic waves are reflected when they are normally incident from the surface, or when they make and they come to the, arrive at the surface with an angle such that the B field is parallel to the surface. So the electric field is in the, pla in the reflection plane. And now we will look at the other problem when the B field is, uh, is not parallel, but the, e the other case when the E field is parallel to the surface is part of your homework. And now we will look at, we have two media, but what if, not, not necessarily two media, let's start with a single media, a homogeneous medium, but it's a conductor. Then what will happen? Well, first of all, when we have a conductor, if you put an electric field in a conductor, there will be currents generated. So we cannot really say that the current is equal to zero. Remember, in our previous derivations, we set the current to be zero everywhere. It was a neutral dielectric. There was no current flowing through it. But now we are talking about conductors, which if there is an electric field, there will be a current. So let's first look at the Mac R Maxwell's equations and how they will be modified. So curl of del dot d is equal to rho free over epsilon, rho free, no epsilon zero. We have the del dot b, this is equal to zero. Well, I, we will I will still assume that we are dealing with neutral conductors. There might be currents running through it, but it will stay neutral. And then we have the curl of e is equal to minus del B by del T. Nothing changes here. Şöyle bir sıkıntım var. Şarjı taktığım zaman çalışmıyor. Önceden titriyordu. Şey yapınca kesiliyor mu? Şarjı takınca kesiliyor. Çıkarınca geri geliyor. Bir tek bu projektörde böyle problemi var. Şarjı yok herhalde. Şarjı <gülüyor> 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 <g
you say, what do we know about? We know that charge is conserved. Well, charge conservation basically tells me that the charge density at a given point, it might be changing with time, but if it is changing with time, it should be due to some current running through the system. And the current and the, the divergence of the current and the time uh, change of the charge density should be related through this continuity relation. So this is, if you have, if you can prove such an expression, we had already discussed that the corresponding quantities are conserved. So if this is satisfied, this is the density of charges, this is the current of charges, if this is satisfied, then the charges are conserved. So they cannot just disappear or they cannot just appear from nowhere. But let's see, we know what J is in terms of the electric field. The divergence of sigma E, this should be equal to zero. Well, yes. You see, when we said that there, is, there cannot be an electric field inside the conductor, I, uh, em I always emphasize that in electrostatics. Now this is no longer electrostatics. So it is possible, I mean, you can just put charges there, there is nothing that to prevent it. But the moment that you put charges over there, it will create an electric field. But the charges will be moving out because it's a conductor. And with time, not instantaneously, with time, all the charges will move to the surface of the conductor, the electric field inside will be zero. But during this small amount of time, well, how long it will be depends on what your sigma is, as we will see in a moment. During this amount of time, when there is a charge inside your conductor, you get an electric field. Or similarly, we will be looking at uh, the waves. You can have waves in, an, in a conductor. Well, we will assume the conductor is uniform, so a sigma is just a constant. And moreover, well, let me first write that sigma is constant. Now, I will also make the assumption that the conductor is a linear dielectric. So if it's a linear dielectric, then divergence of the electric field is nothing but rho over epsilon. So it has to be homogeneous and also linear to be able to do this, this step from that equation to this equation. Well, so now we have an equation that governs how rho changes as a function of time. So basically rho is nothing but rho zero. Well, let's say rho at the point r at the time t is just equal to rho at the point r at the time zero multiplied by e to the power minus t over tau where tau is epsilon over sigma. So for example, we can look at certain cases. It can be that we are looking at a dielectric, not a conductor. That means sigma is equal to zero, tau is infinite, tau is infinite, so whatever charge you put at the point R, it stays there at all times. This is just one. The other extreme, it can be that uh, you have a perfect conductor. A perfect conductor is one for which sigma is infinite. Well, if sigma is infinite, tau is zero, so this is e to the power minus some number over zero, which is infinite. So the charge density at time t larger than zero is zero. You put your charge at t equal to zero there and it immediately moves to the surface. So that is what we call a perfect conductor. So even in electrodynamics, as we will also see in a moment, if you have a perfect conductor, you still cannot create an electric field. 
You cannot put any, keep any charges inside. All the charges that you put in, inside the perfect conductor, they instantly move to the surface. Of course, this contradicts the special theory of relativity, blah, blah, but those things we are already ignoring over here, some of it. Now, let's go back to our original question. What about the elect electromagnetic fields inside the conductor? Can we create electromagnetic waves? Let's see. You see, if you remember our discussion in, in case of dielectrics, non-conducting medium, we first show that the electric field satisfies the wave equation. So basically, we had this equation. Minus 1 over c squared, del squared e by del t squared. This was equal to 0. This is the wave equation. Well, now, in the presence of, in, inside the conductor, let's see if this equation is modified at all or not. Let's see how it will behave. So these four are Maxwell's equations. Now, let's start with the curl of E. And let's take the curl of both sides. Well, again, for simplicity, I will assume that the medium, the conductor is, as a dielectric, it's linear and homogeneous. So the dielectric constant doesn't change from point to point. And we can always write the displacement field as proportional to the E field, and the H field will always be proportional to the B field. Let's take the curl of both sides. I'm, I'm, I'm basically repeating the steps that we had done in the case of a non-conducting medium. Let's take the curl of both sides, curl of curl of E is equal to minus del by del T, curl of B. Well, curl of E, now curl of curl of E is gradient of the divergence of E minus the Laplacian of E. This is my left hand side. I'm just using the uh, vector identities. This is equal to minus del by del t. Well, the curl of B, you see, from this equation, I know that the curl of B is equal to mu. Well, J3 is sigma times E plus mu epsilon del E by del t. I use the fact that H is equal to B over mu in a linear medium. Then I use the fact that mu is homogeneous so that it's a constant. I can just take it out of the curl and move the mu to the right-hand side. And I use Ohm's law to write the J in terms of the electric field and conductivity. And finally, I use the fact that the, uh, D is equal to epsilon times E in a linear medium. And epsilon is independent of time, so I can just take it out of time. Out of the time derivative. You see, the total free charge is zero. Just think of this wire. Is it charged? It's neutral. The wire is neutral, but there are charges moving in it. So the current is non zero, but the charge of the wire is zero. There are positive charges, negative charges. They are always in equal densities at every point, so their sum is zero. But the positive charges are not moving. Only the negative charges are moving. So they are creating my current. So here I'm also making a similar assumption. It's, we had said that it is possible that you put some charges somewhere, but if you wait for some time, they will all go to the surface, not inside your conductor, or if the, your conductor is infinite, they will go to infinity, let's say, so there won't be any charge then still left. But if you put an electric field somehow, then it will create currents. It, can, it will not be able to create any charge density anywhere, but it will still create currents. So 
So back to our equation. We have the curl of curl of E. We can write it uh, in this form using the uh, vector identities. Now here, instead of the curl of P, I can just use that expression over there. Mu sigma E plus mu epsilon del E by del T. And let me just uh, reorganize it a bit. So this will be 1 over v squared del squared e by del t squared minus the Laplacian of e is equal to minus mu sigma del e by del t, where v is 1 over square root of mu epsilon. Well, this side, the left-hand side, is just like the wave equation in a non-conductor. Conductivity just brings this additional term over here. Well, you see, if you remember your courses on waves and on oscillations, including your first-year course, you probably had seen your second-year course also, I mean, if you have an oscillator, an oscillator ba basically has the equation of motion, the second time derivative, plus some restoring force, let's just look at it, consider this as your restoring force, is equal to zero, that is the simple oscillator. Well, if there is dissipation, then there is a force which is minus the velocity, or minus the first derivative. In this sense, this equation is like the damped oscillator. And so the solutions will also be damped. So we still have solutions of this equation are still called waves. Now let's look at the waves. So let's look at the case E is equal to some E0 vector e to power i kz minus omega t. Is it possible to have such a solution? Well, of course, I mean, here, here I, could have, I should have put a k dot r, an arbitrary vector over there, but I just assume that I choose my z direction to be the direction of k, for simplicity, or the direction of propagation of my wave. Now, if this is a solution, what are the conditions on k, on w, what e0, etc.? Well, let's try to find them. First, look at, let's look at the wave equation. So if, if this is a solution of our, wave, our damped wave equation, dissipative wave equation. So what are the conditions? We will get conditions on k and w. Now, 1 over v squared. Well, each time derivative brings in front a factor minus i omega. So I have second time derivative over there. So I get two factors of minus i omega squared e minus, well, that Laplacian just becomes the uh, second derivative with respect to z. Each derivative with respect to z becomes a factor of i k. So this is minus i k squared. E. And then I have the right hand side. It, is, it should be equal to minus mu sigma. Each time derivative brings minus i omega times e. Now this e over here is zero times this exponential. I'm looking for a solution for which the electric field is non-zero. So this basically tells me that minus omega squared over v squared plus k squared should be equal to i mu sigma omega. Or k squared should be equal to omega squared over v squared plus i mu sigma omega. C 
sigma surface current density değil. No, this is the conductivity. In this example, there are no surfaces. I'm just assuming a homogeneous, infinite conducting medium. Which epsilon? Uh, yes, yes, you are right. Where is that epsilon? That epsilon should be over here. No, or... No, that epsilon is in V squared already. You see, V over here is 1 over square root of mu epsilon. Epsilon is over here. There is no epsilon over here. Okay, now things start to get somewhat weird. K is not a real number. Remember, in the absence of conductivity, K was a real number. It was the wave vector. Now, here we see that K is no longer a real number because of this conductivity. Now let's see what does that mean. Does it make sense? Now let me just make a small change in notation. Let me call this K tilde. Well, it's not really the wave vector, it's a complex number. So that's why I would like to change the notation slightly. So this is K tilde. This is K tilde. Here I have a K tilde. K tilde is a complex number, so it has a real part, which I will call K, and an imaginary part, plus I kappa. Now we will write the expressions of this K and kappa in a, in a moment. But I mean, whatever the expressions are, this K tilde has some real part and an imaginary part. Now let's look, put this back in our wave, our wave. You see, the, this is the expression of our wave on the first line on the screen. So electric field is now E is equal to E0 times e to the power minus kappa z e to the power i kz minus omega t. Remember, k is the real part of k tilde. Well, you see, this is nothing but the wave that we had studied before. K being the wave vector, it's proportional to two pi, it's equal to two pi over the wavelength, omega is the frequency, etc. Can we can we write the uh, on the W? Well, let's see, W is not equal to K tilde times V. W it will not even be K times V. We will see how the K, V, etc. are related to each other. Well, uh, sorry, in a sense you are right. W is equal to K times V, you see. This is the wave part. So the second part is one. Uh, the, which second part? Uh, we will come back to this equation in a moment. Let's, let's just keep that equation over there. You see, we have a wave. This wave has a velocity. Well, at the time being, I don't know whether that velocity is equal to this one, by the way. That velocity can be different. The velocity of this part of the wave is just omega over k. But then we have this part. This is kind of the amplitude, which, as you see, the amplitude decays as z increases. As the wave is propagating, the wave gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So, okay, one thing is as the wave is moving, it's losing energy. So what happens to the energy? Let me first ask that question. It goes back to the matter. You see, we, have a, we are talking about a conductor which is not perfect. Sigma is conductivity, but one over sigma is resistivity. So the, this material, if it's not a perfect conductor, you see a perfect conductor is sigma is equal to infinite, that is resistivity equal to zero. If it's not a perfect conductor, then it has resistance. So if you are creating currents, the currents will lose energy. It will, they will convert it to heat. So the wave is losing energy because its energy is converted into heat. And as the wave is moving, it's 
losing its energy. That's what this exponential decay tells us. Well, first of all, in a superconductor, you cannot create an electric field. That's what you see. If you go back, in a superconductor, you cannot have an electric field. A superconductor is not heated by the current. The current does not dissipate. Now, just an interface over here, uh, just an interview. Uh, you were interested in how do you create a polarizer filter? You see, this wave will propagate. You see, if let's say we have an interface and somehow we send a wave into this, this is our conductor. The amplitude of the wave will decay. Within a distance, 1 over kappa, the wave will become very weak. So let's say this is delta, that distance. 1 over kappa, this is called the skin depth. If you send an electromagnetic wave on a conductor, it can only penetrate this much. Not any further. Now, let's just imagine we have wires, many of them. We just put them side by side. Well, although I'm assuming that there are gaps, just imagine that you just put them in contact. But they are isolated from one another. Now, this such a system is not homogeneous, not even isotropic. We cannot straight away borrow what we had done over there and apply it over here, but more or less we, can, we, can, we do have the, uh, the basic phenomena what's going on, so we can apply that ba our basic understanding here. Now, in this system, suppose we send some wave with an electric field in this direction. When it hits this system of wires, well, they will create currents. The currents will move up and down. Uh, the conductivity in the vertical direction of this system is quite high. It will create currents. It will create heat. Its energy will be converted into heat. So when you're, you send a wave, when it passes through this uh, system, let's say, on the other side, it would, it would appear with a lower energy. If you create it thick enough, almost none of the wave will pass through. While the thickness should be larger than that skin depth, so none of the wave will be able to pass through. All of the wave just loses its energy. If you send a wave, pol ele uh, electromagnetic wave polarized in the vertical direction, now let's see what happens if you send an electromagnetic wave polarized in the horizontal direction. Well, these wires are insulated. You cannot create horizontal currents. You can create vertical currents in the system, but not horizontal currents. So if you send a, a horizontally polarized electromagnetic wave through this system, no currents will be created. It will not dissipate any energy. It will just pass through. So here you have a filter made up of wires. So if you send an electromagnetic wave with arbitrary polarization, we can always write it as the sum of our vertical polarization and the horizontal polarization. The vertical polarization component will not pass through. The horizontally polarized component will pass through. So on the other side of this filter, you will get a horizontally polarized electromagnetic wave. This is an example of a polarizing filter. Not this one. I don't care. On the other side, I only have horizontally polarized wave. Because circularly polarized wave is nothing but the superposition of one vertical, one horizontally polarized wave. Now, let's, let's go back to this equation. 
what are the real parts, what are the imaginary parts. You see, the, another interesting thing over here is that is that additional term is frequency dependent. So, okay, it's the, uh, conductiv it's the conductivity appearing over there, but not co just conductivity, it's conductivity times the frequency. So let's see, let's see the consequences. Now we know that K plus I kappa squared, this should be equal to omega squared over V squared plus I mu sigma times omega. Well, the magnitude, uh, now how can we solve this? Well, just take the square, K squared minus kappa squared plus twice I K kappa this should be equal to omega squared over V squared plus I mu sigma omega. All the co coefficients appearing here, except that, that I over there are real. K is real, kappa is real by definition. So the real parts of both sides should be equal. The imaginary parts of both sides should be equal. That tells me that K squared minus kappa squared should be equal to omega squared over V squared and k times kappa should be equal to 1 over 2 mu sigma omega. So I have two equations for two unknowns which I need to solve for. Now let's solve, for, solve them. Let's look at k. What is k? How is k related with omega? The second equation tells me that kappa is equal to 1 over 2 k mu sigma omega. If you just put it in the first equation, you get mu sigma omega squared over 4 k squared. Now this is k squared minus this one is equal to omega squared over v squared or just multiply both sides by k squared, I get k squared squared minus omega squared over v squared k squared minus mu sigma omega squared over four. This is equal to zero. And finally, I get k. Or k squared is equal to omega squared over v squared plus or minus omega to the 4 divided by v to the 4 plus mu sigma omega squared times 1 over 2. This is our k squared. But you see, k squared, we defined it to be positive. k is real, so k squared is positive. So here I have two solutions. The negative solution is negative, so I only have the plus sign. So you see, omega over k, which is supposed to be the velocity of the wave, is not equal to v. So the dissipation basically changes the speed also. Now, omega over k is not equal to this number v which appears in our equation, but omega over k is, of course, the velocity of the wave or the speed of the wave. So we still identify this with the speed. It's just the speed is no longer v. You see, speed now depends on omega. Let's see, k over omega squared, let me write that one. This is equal to 1 over 2 v squared, or 1 plus square root of 1 plus v to the 4 mu sigma over omega squared.
in the absence of conductivity, if this term were absent, we would get 1 plus 1 is 2. It will cancel this 2. So k over omega squared is just 1 over the v squared. So the, ve the velocity of the wave it would be just v. But in the presence of dissipation, the wave velocity is not v. It is related to v, but it's not equal to v. And it depends also on the frequency. Different frequencies travel at different velocities. So this is what uh, we will also study such systems. This system, such systems in which the speed of the wave depends on the velocity is what we call a dispersive system. A conductive system is a dispersive system. If you put two different, uh, two waves of two different frequencies, the shape of the wave will change in time. You see, in general, when we were talking about the waves, we said that a wave is a, a deformation of something which moves in space and doesn't change in time. Well, of course, that was assuming that there was no dispersion, but now we see that in a conductive medium, at least, we have dispersion. And so we know we had, this is the velocity, we find the k, if you want, you can just solve for kappa also. Well, I will not do that. I mean, it's just some algebra. So here is your kappa. It's 1 over 2k. Just put in the value of k, and you get kappa. in this way. Nothing. You see, that V is, I mean, you see what we said. We have this wave equation on the first line over there. 1 over V squared is some coefficient over there. In the absence of medium, sorry, not in the absence of medium, in the absence of dissipation, if there is no conductivity in the system, then that V is the speed of my wave. But we see that since there is such a such a term, the, uh, the wave function now can be written in this form, again, the first line on the top. So there we have this wave component, that is kz minus omega t, there k is a real number, and that k is given by this expression over there. Well, that is nothing but a wave. And the velocity of that wave is nothing but omega over k. That is the definition of the velocity of, or the speed of a wave. So omega over k, or inverse the speed squared of the wave, we had found that it is given by this expression. So you see that v is no longer the speed of the wave. It's some, just some coefficient, some constant. It determines the velocity through the speed through such a relation. So now we see that the speed depends on the conductivity. It depends on the frequency. So even we are talking about us one medium, the same medium, different frequency waves will travel with different velocities, different speeds. In the absence of conductivity, all waves travel at the same speed. But when you turn on the conductivity, basically all waves, waves travel, different frequencies travel, travel at different speeds. Again, this is just similar to the uh, case of a dissipative oscillator. You see, when you have an oscillator, when you turn on the dissipation, the period increases. Now, that is analogous to the change in speed over here. Well, for an oscillator, you get a single frequency. You cannot really talk about different frequencies. But you can talk about the change in the uh, period or the average velocity, let's say, during the oscillation. Well, just like over here, the speed of the wave changes due to the dissipation. Now, of course, this is how, what omega, how omega and k should be related for that solution to be a solution of our wave equation. 
Okay, so we know that one thing, the omega and k tilde, let's say, So what we did, I assumed such an electric field or an electric wave that satisfies my above equation if this condition is satisfied. So that is one of the conditions that the parameters in my solution should satisfy so that I have a solution of the wave equation. But what about the B field? What about the E0, etc.? So let's look at the Maxwell's equations. What do they tell us? So we know that E is equal to E0, e to power i k, til k tilde z minus omega t. Let's look at the first equation. Curl of E. Well, the curl of E, each derivative with respect to uh, let's see. Let me just convert it to a, for this example at least, a vectorial equation. So the first equation just becomes the curl of E is I times this K tilde vector cross E0 times e to the power i k tilde vector dot r minus omega t. This should be equal to minus i omega, no, not minus i, sorry, minus del b by del t. And this tells me that b should be just k, this k vector and the k tilde in the z direction cross E0 times e to the power i k z minus omega t divided by omega. If you just take the time derivative of this B field, you get the minus i omega, well, omegas cancel so you get a minus i times, my, this minus cancels this minus sign, so you get i times kz cross e0. So this is our B field. Now this was not our first Maxwell's equation, let's look at the first one. Del dot d is equal to zero. Which in our case means del dot e is equal to zero, but this just means k in the z hat dot e zero should be equal to zero. You see, we started with a wave moving in the z direction. This e zero vector, or the polarization vector, should be perpendicular to the z direction. Just like in the case, in the previous cases we studied. Uh, it's a transversal wave. The uh, electric field is always perpendicular to the propagation direction. Well, z and E0, they are perpendicular to each other, so this basically tells me that P is also perpendicular to both of them. So again, we have these three vectors. If this is our k tilde vector, This is our z direction in which my wave is traveling. This should be my E0, and this should be my B0. They are all perpendicular to each other. Well, k tilde is a complex number, a complex vector. So that's why I'm trying to avoid using, using that. Well, let me just use the k vector if you like. That is the, I can still use the k vector. K vector is the real part of k tilde. That is what determines the propagation direction anyway. 
So at least this is similar to the case uh, when we had non-conducting medium. But there is one difference though. Let's, see, let's look at these B0. Well, what I said was B is equal to B0 e to the power I kz minus omega t k tilde z. E is equal to E0 e to the power I k tilde z minus omega t. E0 and B0, they are just right an, uh, at right angles with each other. They are both perpendicular to k. What about the magnitudes of E and B? E0 and B0. You see, in general, these are also complex vectors. So B0, we said that this is equal to K tilde. Well, let's say this is a Z, this is X, this is Y directions. E is equal to E0 in the x-hat direction, B E0. B0 is equal to B0 in the y-hat direction. And we have that relation, that second line on the top between B0 and E0. So B0 should be equal to K tilde times E0 over omega. It's not K over omega, it's K tilde over omega. Well, basically, what does this mean? What will this imply for us? You see, E0 is in general a complex number. And before, in our previous case, k tilde over omega was k over omega in the absence of conductivity. So here I have a complex number. I'm multiplying it with a real number. I get another complex number, but basically they both have the same phase. So if the electric field was a cosine, the B field was a cosine. If the electric field was a sine, the B field was a sine with the same phase. But now k tilde is a complex number. So they differ by a phase. So it is possible that the electric field in a conductor is a cosine, whereas the B field is a sine. Now let, let me write it more concre concretely. Let's say E0 is equal to E0 magnitude times e to the power i delta E. B0 will be B0 times e to the power i delta B. You see, the electric field, if you just take the real part of our expressions, etc., it is just uh, E0, e to the power minus kappa z, cosine kz minus omega t plus delta E, in the x direction. The magnetic field of this wave is B0 e to the power minus kappa z cosine kz minus omega t plus delta B. And let's say k tilde over omega, we said that it's a complex number. So we can write this complex number as k tilde over omega is magnitude times e to the power i, let's say delta. This is a general complex number. I can always write any complex number as its magnitude times some, some phase. So we know that E0 magnitude multiplied by k tilde over omega magnitude times e to the power i delta plus delta e. This is my, the right hand side over here, which should be equal to b0, which is the left hand side. This is equal to b0 
e to the power i delta b. Now you see the magnitude magnitude of b0 is just the magnitude of e0 multiplied by the magnitude of k tilde over omega. But you see delta b and delta e in general they differ. Depending on your conductivity, etc., for example, one of them can stay a cosine, the other one will be a sine. They are shifted, the waves, the, electri the waves in the electric and magnetic field, they will be shifted relative to each other due to this conductivity. The velocity of what? How do you identify it with velocity? What's your argument? It has the units of a speed, that I agree, but how, with which velocity do you identify it with? You see, k over omega, or omega over k, using that exponential factor, of course, you need to take the uh, real part, I, I can identify that with a wave, and omega over k I can identify with the velocity, the speed of the uh, wave. But not kappa, k tilde, sorry. The kappa is just the overall decaying factor. Kappa over omega? No, there is no, I mean, you cannot identify it with anything. In a sense, yeah. This kappa tells me what the envelope is. The wave stays within this envelope and it moves within this envelope. Okay, let's give a 10 minute break, then we will continue. 